It's Charlie from Daily Motor. Today we've got the awesome redesigned 2020 Genesis G90. This is the 5.0 Ultimate model, top trim G90. This is going to be a full comprehensive review. We're going to head back to the office, go through the build configurator, talk about the car, take it out for some driving impressions, get a look around, get a feel for the car, then come back, compare it against some of its competition, and I'll give you my final thoughts at the end. Let's go check it out. All right, so starting off, taking a look at Genesis's website. Pretty straightforward. Genesis only has four vehicles right now. They're technically only really making three. They've got the G70 entry level sports sedan, G80 mid size sedan, and then this G90 full size sedan. They also released the G80, sorry, the GV80 coming out for 2021. It's a beautiful looking SUV based on the G80 platform. So that's going to be really nice to see. But for right now, we're looking at the G90. Very simple, easy to use website. You can see starting price at 72,200 bucks. That's probably without destination, so you'd want to throw that in there as well. What do you need to know? So the G90 comes with two engine options. You've got 3.3 liter turbo, and then also a five liter V8. The V8 doesn't make all that much more power than the 3.3. Or sorry, it does make a good amount more power. It doesn't make all that much more torque. Where do we want to go here? We want something like, oh, here we go. So the, the Turbo V6 has 365 horse and just a little bit more torque than that, like 370 something. And then the V8 is 420 horse and 383 pound feet of torque. So as much as I love the five liter V8 in this Genesis that we have, I'd probably just be getting the 3.3 liter. And you got an eight-speed automatic that shifts wonderfully. Bringing up the build configurator here, Genesis kind of started things, I think, with the G70 with a really interactive build configurator. And you can see here, you get like a 3D rendering that you can drag around. It's really cool. You can sort of zoom in with the scroll, get right up on the car. Isn't that cool? You get way back. Kind of whatever angle you want to see. You can click on things, turn on the headlights, get inside the vehicle here, look around. A lot of manufacturers have sort of a 360 view, but none of them go quite as in depth as this. Look, you even got the little airbag logo here. Okay. Let's go back, how can I go outside again? Click on the door handle, probably, maybe, right here. Click on the window. So what if I wanna change the color? How do I do that? Nope. Rear seat, turns on the lights, wipers. <laughs> uh, just open up the door, look at that. Open up the trunk. I'm having a lot of fun, guys. I'm sorry. There we go. Is that color? There we go. Yep. So you've got this white. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Himalayan gray, Vic black, Porto red. That looks classy. What else we got here? We got Gold Coast silver, that red, and then this. Adriatic blue, which is also really pretty. I do tend to like blue, but this is such a classy car. I'm actually going to go with this Porto red. Let's hop inside. Wow, look at that. It zooms right in on the clock. How silly. What about for interior trims? I will say, as cool as this build configurator is, it's not super intuitive for how to pick out certain things. You definitely interact with the car nicely though. What is this? Rear seat, top in the back. What if I just want to change the interior trim? Is that an option? Select trim maybe? Throw in zip code. There we go, this is better. So you actually only pay an extra 3500 bucks for the V8. 
That's better than it used to be in previous G90s. So I'd be getting all-wheel drive. And I, for that price, I'm probably stepping up to the five liter. So let's choose that. G90 is such a deal as it is. <laughs> Packages. So with five liter, not only do you get the engine, but you also get the rear seat entertainment system with the dual 10.3 inch HD screens. 14-way power rear seat, 12-way power left seat, vented rear seats, memory system for the rear seats. It's pretty much like a rear seat executive package. I would choose this black and beige for my luxury car. So to compare that, if you get the twin turbo V6, then you're not getting the ultimate, you're getting the premium, which is gonna get you pretty much everything you need, but you're missing out on sort of that rear seat luxury package. So the fact that you can pay, if you go back, this 3,500 bucks and get, is that is that right? Is it, no, it's only, it's 2,500 bucks. My, two, three, four, five, no, 3,500 bucks and get the, you get the extra torque here, you get the five liter, sounds great, strong, powerful, and you get that rear seat luxury package. That's the one I'm going with. Not too many, other than that, you pretty much just get those two options to choose from with the G90. Over to accessories, just a few little silly things like that. Might as well, the, the premium grade floor mats already included as well as the first aid kit and the cargo mat, so all in. You're looking at pretty much exactly what we've got outside. $76,725 for a top trim, fully loaded Genesis G90. That's pretty good. Take a look at the window sticker we've got here. The prices may be a little bit different thanks to timing and location. So you can see this one that we built, 725, they probably raised the price up just a little bit from when this car was built, but we're dealing with the exact same thing with a different color. $76,695. Our car is coming with everything Genesis has to offer. The V8, 8-speed automatic, 19-inch beautiful cool-looking wheels, 22-way power driver seat, 16-way power passenger seat, heated and ventilated, smart cruise control, head-up display, big navigation system, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto Support, wireless device charging. This car's really got it all. So let's go head outside, take a look at it for ourselves. All right, so checking out the G90 here, like we said, this is the five liter ultimate trim. So you're dealing with a 420 horsepower V8. You can see that right here. You got the little 5.0 badge. Nice new Genesis lettering. I, I know I said it at the beginning, but I just can't get over the tail light and the rear design of this car. I just think it's so cool. Mm. Little trunk button right here, pop it open. Pretty standard fare, luxury sedan trunk. However, this is one feature that I love when it comes in vehicles. I know it's just an accessory, but having this mat right here allows you to have things like luggage or right here, I've got some camera equipment in my bag, ice scraper. It holds things down and keeps them from rattling around and sloshing around everywhere when you're driving. Now, in a big luxury sedan like this, it might not be quite as necessary, but I took a trip once in a Kia Stinger and it had one of these accessory nets. And it was great because I was able to go through tight, twisty mountain roads with two suitcases in the back and have them securely mounted with the net. Very nice feature there. Simple, but it works. Now the back seat is just as pleasant place to be as any in the G90. Got this nice, good feeling, good smelling leather. Carpet test, it's thick, it feels good, not quite S-Class thick, but it's nice. Another sign of a luxury vehicle that Genesis got right, soft closed doors. So if you don't shut the door all the way, car does it for you. So back here, 
what you want to do is pull down this. This gives you access to all sorts of controls. So actually, I'm gonna hop up to the front real quick, start up the vehicle, show you everything it can do. There we go. Now we got the car running. So you've got the rear climate controls here. You press that and you get outside temperature as well as your temperature set for back here. You've got your own individual fan control, temperature control. Very responsive, simple, works great. You've also got heated and cooled seats back here as well as sunshade that comes up in the center and sunshades on either side. So you can sit back here be nice and shaded, not let anyone see who's riding. Kind of that limousine feel. You also have plenty of seat adjustments back here. You've got front and back on the bottom, as well as recline and headrest adjustment. No pillows on the headrest, but they are soft. They're comfortable. You can also just press this button here and it moves everything back into a reclined shape. Do that, and you come back. Next, you've got these screens here. Press that, they come to life instantly, which is nice. And then you've kind of got a simplified version of the same system that's up there in center infotainment. But it isn't a touch screen, so you have to control it with the center knob here. If you go through, you got your map, Decent mapping system in the Genesis, not quite as high def as some of the other systems, but it works fine enough. What else? Weather, radio, navigation, some more setup features, climate, and media controls. You can also power that one up. So they actually are not independent of each other. So whoever's sitting back here, if there are two people, They've got to be doing their same, the, the, the same thing. You, you can't have your own things going on. Also, no sort of DVD player or media inputs. So, actually, if you did have something plugged into the USBs, so you see there's a USB port here. If you did have a movie plugged in here, you could watch it. But no DVD player. Turn those off. You can also adjust the front seat from right here. Get that out of the way. So that if you were to press hold this button, that's going to move passenger front seat forward all the way. Then once that's up and out of the way, this seat moves, comes up, allowing you to use that one either for get it out of the way for legroom or you could really use it as a footrest if you wanted to. back into position. We've also got some seat memory controls for all four outboard seats in the vehicle. Got some mirrors back here. Really nice feeling handles all the way around as well as some fade in fade out dome lights. All right let's keep it moving up to the front. Beautiful interior materials, everything feels great, looks great, it's designed nicely. No big surprises with the infotainment display in the G90. It's not trying to go for the flashy, showy, look at me sort of luxury. It's going for more of a simple, easy to use formula, and it does that well. So you had the same navigation system as you saw in the back, works fine. You can control things through either touchscreen or 
the center rotary knob here and these buttons. And I like that because if you're just driving along, you can take your eyes off the road for as little as possible to just sort of scroll through things and get to where you need to go. Bring up the uh, navigation maybe, do some zoom in. Or if you need to do something more specific, you can just reach up and touch it. You got your media here, pretty standard media inputs, Sirius XM, FM, AM, Bluetooth, and USB. No CD player, no 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack. You have climate controls here. Not really necessary to have a screen, but if you kind of like that, you can show you what you're doing as well as control the rears separately. Other than that, mostly just kind of standard settings, manuals, audio settings, vehicle information, nothing too fancy here in the Genesis. Cameras. The Genesis G90 has a pretty robust camera system. You got your standard backup cam here, pretty good resolution, as well as a 360 on top. And then you can scroll to a few other options. You've got this one, which kind of gives you a top-down, uh, a top-down-ish look of the car. So if you're coming up to a curb here, you can see right as you're coming up to it. Then you can also go there, and you've got a curb view. So let's back up here to these curbs. So you a nice, good display. Those lines show you which way you're going. And then right about here, I can switch up to that view. Shows me coming up to that curb. And then, if I really wanted, if I were coming up to a curb on the side, I could press that and see where my wheels were, make sure I don't bush into the curb. Then, you can also see the same cameras in the front. So you've got the same view going forward like that. Still the 360 on the side. Kind of the above view there. And then your curb views. Definitely nice to see when you're piloting your luxury vehicle parking it around town. You also have parking beepers as well, which I appreciate. All right, let's get on the road. I like to say there are two approaches to luxury cars. There is one approach, which is to shove as much technology and features and make the car feel as fancy as possible. You get that with a lot of the new BMWs, Mercedes, they drive incredibly. They've got all this fancy tech and massaging seats and crazy ambient lighting. And then there's the other approach, which is to make a vehicle as comfortable and innocuous as possible. That's more of Lexus and Genesis's, Genesis's approach to luxury. These vehicles are super supple, calm, isolated, easy to use. And what I like about Genesis is it kind of splits the difference a bit between a Lexus and a Mercedes. You've got pretty good technology, but not a lot. Everything from Genesis, especially this new G90, is straightforward, easy to use, no, no technological craziness, just good, tried and true, well executed luxury refinement. The materials all feel great. The driving experience is incredibly subdued. That's not to say that this V8 can't get up and go when you want it to. I mean, it's 420 horsepower, and when you mat it, it goes. But it's not begging you to, and it's not the ethos of this vehicle the way that a lot of the German brands have been trying to transform their luxury vehicles into also being sports cars. I will say there's something about having a V8 in a luxury sedan that just feels right. It's just so torquey and powerful, but then it can drop down to such low, comfortable revs when you're just putzing around. You can drive this thing around and never exceed 2000 RPM easily. When you get going from a stop in comfort mode, the vehicle starts in second gear. And what's really cool is the throttle, when you get on the gas, nothing really happens at first in a good way because in a luxury vehicle as you start off as you get going you don't want to jolt your passengers back you don't want to jolt yourself back really so the way the genesis starts off in comfort mode barely anything happens when you first push into the throttle and then it leans into the power watch 
you don't have to be super ginger with the gas pedal in order to get that smooth, comfortable, easy off the line transition. What are some of my standout likes about the G90? First of all, the looks. I went over it with you before, but I think these looks are awesome. I really like Genesis's new design language. I think this and the G80 and the GV80, I think they all look great. Even if you don't like the looks, you have to appreciate a sedan like this taking some chances and looking different. I will say the older Genesis's were definitely bland and these ones are nowhere near that. Next, the simplicity of the gauge cluster. You don't need a whole bunch of different screens and submenus and, and menus upon menus just to get your basic information. You might have seen the recent video I did on the Corolla. I didn't I wasn't able to find a digital speedometer within multiple menus on that system. Now it was buried way in there between underneath some settings changes, but why isn't a digital speedometer just out front and easy to use and in the open? I really appreciate Genesis's clean, straightforward design, just two analog gauges, a digital display in the middle, and this little blind spot monitor you can see here. That simplicity extends to the center infotainment display. You've got two ways of controlling it. You can either use the touch the scroller here or the touch screen. How easy is that? There are definitely some submenus, and there is a bit of a learning curve for which menus to switch over to, kind of moving this joystick sideways or rotating it or using the back and menu buttons. But once you get over that learning curve, as you would quickly as an owner of this vehicle, it's very easy to use. Next, the audio system. This 17 speaker system is one of the best I've tested. If you want to know more about that system, check the link in the description for our sound system review. But it sounds excellent. And there's not very many gimmicks with it. No weird, crazy sound modes that are just trying to flex the technical abilities of the tuners. Just good, straightforward music. Next, the driving dynamics. A luxury vehicle should be plush, it should be supple, and it should be isolated. It doesn't need to be hard and aggressive and pin you to the back of your seat all the time and be able to do a G of cornering around a skid pad. I appreciate that the G90 continues its ethos of just being a refined, subtle, and competent luxury plus vehicle. It's kind of like one of those older luxury cars that sort of just floats and wallows. It's like driving around on a big marshmallow. Lastly, the price. All in, this car is somewhere around $75,000, 78000 that's an awesome deal. Right now, Chris up at the Topher has a BMW Alpina B7, which is their super luxurious Autobahn Cruiser 7 Series sedan that would compete with this. And that costs over $150,000. You can get two of these for the price of one of those. And yes, obviously that car is gonna be able to do a lot more. It's more luxurious, it looks even cooler. But you have to ask yourself, for twice the money, is it really giving you twice the car? The answer is an easy no. This Genesis provides 90% of what any luxury car buyer could want, on average, at much lower prices than any of its competition. do a quick 60 to 0 braking test and then a 0 to 60 acceleration test for you. For the acceleration I'm going to go sport. I'm actually going to turn traction and stability control off. Quick brake torque and then full gas. decently quick. Braking was good. Everything's competent with this car, but you can't get by the fact that you're motivating such a large and ponderous vehicle. One thing you will notice as we drive around in sport here for a little bit, it does make a, a horribly artificial sound through the speakers to sort of like make it feel and sound sportier, but 
it doesn't it doesn't sound great it really doesn't and it's a shame because this is an awesome five liter v8 motor so i'll do some manual shifting here it's almost echoey it almost sounds like there's a ghost in here now I'll switch over to eco and do that same pull And it, it might be so subtle that it's it's difficult for you to pick up on while you're watching, especially if you're using a cell phone or something, no headphones. But I'll do it a few more times and just try to notice the, the, the subtle echoiness and sort of artificial sound. So that's eco, that should have minimal sound piping. Let's try comfort. And we'll do the same thing with sport. So it's subtle, but it's it's there. So even in manual shift mode, it does shift for you once you get up toward red line. And also, even with stability control and traction control off, you can see coming out of that roundabout there, it did, uh, track, uh, stability control did inhibit my slide. So no full hoon mode for the G90. And you can also see that there's no manual lock mode for shifting. You can't put the shifter back and forth here or anything. And if, as I use the paddle shifters for a bit, it'll hold the gear for a little while and give me my manual gear selection. But after about 10, 15 seconds of not changing any gears, it just goes back to drive. So we're gonna go to comfort here. Traction control back on. Do a little bit of highway driving. The G90's an absolute dream on the highway. I mean, that's what these cars are made to do, is just eat away miles at 70, 75 miles per hour. No surprise here. Cruise control works very well. It does have a self-driving mode. So if you set the cruise right there. It's gonna get a little confused. Actually, not so bad coming through here. As you can see, it is steering for me. Oh yeah, it did get confused right there. So it steers for you. The adaptive cruise works well. The one thing I will say is I wish there were a bit less tire noise. The wind isolation is really good, but you hear a good amount of road noise coming from these tires. And I don't know if a different sort of tire would benefit it or if it's just nature of the car. So what don't I like on the G90? First of all, what I just mentioned. <laughs> I would like a little bit less tire noise coming through on the highway and, and all roads really. When you're dealing with a car that's this quiet, any little bit of noise coming through gets accentuated. So it's a shame that they couldn't have found a way to make that road noise just a little bit more muted. Next, that artificial sound coming in through the speakers, especially in sport mode. There's no way to turn that off even in custom. In custom here, you've got your powertrain selection, your steering selection, and your suspension mode. But there's no way to disable that sound, at least that I can find. Yes, I get some people like a little bit of noise like that and they like to kind of they don't really mind the the fakeness of it but it would just be nice since it's since it's just coming through the speakers why not give us an option to turn it off next and i know this goes a little bit against sort of how i've been talking about the genesis and its sort of simplicity and, and affordability but it would be nice if there were some more sort of those luxury superfluous sort of options available i'm not saying they need to come on every vehicle but if Genesis really wants to be taken seriously as a luxury automaker, they're gonna have to start providing some of those things like massaging seats, super fancy ambient lighting, um, what else? Uh, silly gimmicks like the gesture controls in the BMW and oh, what are, all, what are some of the other luxury gimmicks? Things like in the Mercedes, the inflatable bolsters as you go around corners, it's just, Genesis is doing a really awesome job at the luxury side of refinement and materials and comfort, 
But if they really want to be taken seriously as a luxury brand, they should at least offer some of those silly, superfluous sort of features. I know, I know, it's not necessary, but something that would be cool to see on future Genesis products. Next, and I know this is a little petty, but I could just go with a push button shifter here. It's kind of this big, clunky, I won't go as far as to say clunky, it feels solid, but all you're doing is moving it one direction for drive, the other direction for reverse, and then this big park button right here. If you've already got the button for park, why not just make two more buttons, three more buttons, and have the whole thing be buttons? But that's personal, I understand that. Next, this rotary dial. Now it really bugs me when anything that you use regularly in a vehicle feels cheap. I always feel that things like steering wheels, shifters, door handles, volume knobs, anything that you have to use for a daily operation of your vehicle should feel good, unless you're dealing with a, a super budget vehicle. But I don't care if there's hard touch plastics way down in the doors or somewhere where you're not gonna see or feel them, but this is just kind of a plasticky, just kind of a cheap plastic feel. And I know that it can be done better because there are other automakers, Mazda, BMW, Audi, that have really nice feeling metal rotary knobs. So if Genesis wants to be taken seriously in the luxury game, they got to do something about this rotary knob. And I love how it works. I love its function. I love that it exists. I just think it should feel more premium, especially because all of the other switch gear and buttons and everything else, you touch, everything else that you touch in here feels great. Other than those minor complaints, the G90 is a pleasure to drive. It's great to be in here. It's <laughs> it's really been hard to come up with faults for the class of this vehicle and the price that it comes in at. So let's take it back to the office, check out some of its competitors, and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so after driving the G90 a bit, I want to take a look at some of its competitors and give you my final thoughts. So typically I use US News and Reports for this section, but they didn't have a really good uh, display of all the cars that are real competitors with the G90. Because the luxury sedan marketplace is kind of weird. You have everything from a Rolls Royce Phantom that costs half a million dollars and is larger than any other sedan out there. And then you've got things like the G90 and, well, I don't think, things like the G90 that kind of almost straddle the line between being like a full on large luxury vehicle. So this was the best list that I could find for you from Car Gurus. And you can see they put the G90 right up in top, even above the Phantom, Cadillac CT6, Mercedes S-Class. I don't know why the Audi S7 is here. The, the A7 and S7 from Audi are actually really based on more of the A6 platform, a little bit smaller vehicle. But you can see all these vehicles that they're putting the G90 above. I'd be a little hesitant to go quite that far, but I would probably be putting it right near the top. So let's go all the way to the bottom of their list and talk about a few of these options. And I'm just gonna skip right over cars that really don't logically compare with the G90. Ghost, no, Panamera, kind of, but your average price you're going to be paying for a Panamera is probably twice what a Genesis is going to cost. I mean, right here you can see average new price $122,000. It's really a sporty car first and a luxury car second. Quattroporte, I'm going to be honest with you guys, haven't driven one of those in years. It's pretty relevant at this point. They don't even have it ranked. K900, actually very similar to the G90, kind of a more budget version of the G90, if you will, made by sister manufacturer Kia. Really nice, really plush, luxurious body, but not quite as luxurious looking or feeling as the G90. I say that's a sporty car, we're gonna skip over it. We're gonna go right up here to the Audi A8. I think that's a great competitor. I think these reviews, this review is a little harsh on the A8. It is a pretty good car, but definitely not looking as nice as the G90, not nearly as good of a value and doesn't really have anything that stands out much above it. It does feel a little bit cooler and more luxurious inside, but it's also full of pretty confusing tech and stuff that's kind of taking that luxurious side of things from the technology standpoint. Seven series, also very good. Really big breadth in the seven series in terms of lineup. You can get everything from a plug-in hybrid all the way up to the 
600 horsepower Alpina V7 that can go over 200 miles per hour. But it does feel a little simple and bland inside compared to some of the other luxury vehicles. Rides really nice, but just doesn't really have that special spark. A7 is too small, Nissan is too expensive, XJ too old, still pretty decent car, Flying Spur too big, Ghibli too small, A7 too small and sporty. Now right here, this Mercedes-Benz S-Class. In terms of right around $100,000, relatively feasible, commonplace, full-size luxury vehicles, there's nothing better than an S-Class. You can go down to your Mercedes-Benz dealer, lease one if you have the means, buy one if you have the means, and, and they're easy to find. I mean, a Rolls-Royce, you're not gonna, most places don't even have a Rolls-Royce dealer around them. Same with Bentley. But Mercedes-Benz S-Class provides the top level of isolation, luxury uh, accoutrement, um, luxurious isolated feeling. Everything that you want from a full-size luxury vehicle, you can get in an S-Class, whether you want sport, whether you want comfort, whether you want efficiency, all those sort of things. Huge breadth in the model lineup. They still look good, even though that this current gen S-Class is getting a little older. Yes, it's a lot more expensive than the G90, but you're kind of making the decision. Do you want the, the ultimate luxury experience for more money? You get the Mercedes. Do you want a little bit more of the budget luxury experience with still all the refinement and uh, pretty like 90% of what the S-Class has to offer, just less tech and features, then you need to go with the G90. CT6 shouldn't be this high. It's it's pretty boaty, but that's about it. The Phantom, obviously an amazing vehicle, but you're starting at half a million dollars. And the G90 really is that good. It looks the part, it's different, it's got great reliability, great warranties. Yeah, it's not going to hustle quite as hard as some of these more sporty vehicles, and it's not going to be quite as technologically advanced as some of them. But when you're talking about $72,000 for an amazing, comfortable, great to drive, great to look at luxury vehicle, you really can't get much better than the G90. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, get a great idea of what the G90 has to offer. If you liked this video, definitely hit that subscribe button. Check out some of our other videos. Check out the sound system test on the G90 if you'd like to know more about it. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.